graphene is a flat sheet of carbon only one atom thick. It's transparent, very strong, and a great conductor of electricity. Given these valuable properties, it has a wide range of applications, but most interestingly, it's reasonably easy to extract. Well, the process itself is very simple. I'm just taking one of these small pieces of graphite and just putting on top of one of these sticky tape. I will take another piece of tape and I will use it to, in a way, clean the surface to make sure that what I get is very nice and shining. So peeling kind of impurities off the surface? It's not really a matter of impurities, it's just that the surface itself is rough. So we want to have something very flat. Once I get something which is very shining, I just flip the tape over and over in order to have a pretty uniform distribution of graphite on the tape. Graphite is a layered material, so each time I fold the, the tape over and I detach, I just split the graphite in two pieces. Once I have this distribution, I just take one of these silicon chips, which are covered in silicon oxide, and I, and I just put on top of the graphite, and I gently push it. I can Why are the chips covered in, did you say, silicon, silicon dioxide? dioxide? Yes, the, the reason is that uh, uh, silicon dioxide acts as a spacer. So um, the light goes through the graphene, through the silicon oxide, and gets reflected from the silicon surface. And because of matter of interference, if the thickness of the silicon oxide is properly tuned, we are able to see the graphene under a simple optical microscope. I will just make sure that the tape um, is very well attached to, to the silicon oxide sample. Once this is done, I will just peel the scotch tape away. And because of the interaction, which is essentially Van der Waals forces, as you, can you see, there are very small pieces of, of graphite. Yes, you can see very small. Yes, actually what you see with just your naked eye, uh, it's not gra graphene. These are just small pieces of graphite. Yes. Next step is to take this chip and stick under the microscope and just map the surface and find the graphene. OK, so what are we seeing now in front of us? Because there's quite a variety of actual colors and layers. Yes, what you see on the screen, it's this one, this triangle shape, is just one single atom layer while together with it there are other materials which are thicker. This sort of yellowish stuff is essentially graphite, which means a very large number of layers, but together with this you can see in the side of the screen there is this sort of purple which are very few layers. We can take, uh, starting again from graphite flakes, in this case we use some chemical that we put on the top, we shake everything up at a certain temperature and speed and we end up uh, with a solution of graphene flakes. So it's as simple as that, just simply putting the solvent into the graphite and you get graphene? Absolutely as simple as that. The only uh, complication is that you require some piece of equipment to do it because it will take quite a, quite a long time to do it by hand. <laughs> when you sonicate uh, in a bath there is the formation of some bubbles inside a bath called caviton and that basically is able to split the planes apart, much in the same way that you can do by hand when you do exfoliation. And that is enough to tear apart the graphite, the graphite planes and end up with single graphene planes in your solution. Because we need to remember again that the binding between the planes is very weak in the case of graphite. That's why you can write with the graphite pencil. So why can't you just say get graphene in one way using the scotch tape and use that for all the different applications? As you've seen before, the scotch tape produces small flakes. These flakes are very good, very high electronic properties, very high quality, but it's not suitable for mass production. You will not want to have hundreds of people in a production facility taking off graphite by hand. So that material is what is utilized for prototype devices and for basic physics application. Then we have two main ways to get to mass production. One is the chemical route that I show here, where we can get some ink, and once you have an ink, you can spray coat it over a large area. You can use it to paint. We use it for inject printing, so we can do printed electronics. And the second method will be 
relating on using some furnace or some deposition system to coat over large area. The main difference is that the electronic quality of the final graph graphene is different. This one has the worst comparative electronic property, while the exfoliation has the best one. But if we compare this exfoliated graphene with traditional plastic electronics, this is still 10 or up to 100 times better of the best plastic electronic material. 